Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com Okay, so we have the flow working. We now have a bunch of options. We can start thinking about the score, thinking about the modules, because I don't like the questions and answers being just strings. Even the result as a dictionary might not be suitable for yeah. what we want. Or we can implement some UI and get some feedback exactly. from our users, yeah. from our clients, from our friends. If you have a client, I think the way to go here would be to have some UI. Yeah. So we have a prototype that can play with, but it's not the real game. Yeah. Right? It's very exactly. mocked up, hard-coded. And if you're in a team, this development can continue independently. A developer can continue working on the scoring, as you said, and another developer can work on the router implementation or the UI. In parallel. In parallel, yeah. Yeah, as, definitely. As long as you have a contract between these modules, as we do right now with the router, for instance, two separate entities can continue in parallel. Okay, cool. So we have a project already. There's a prototype. But since everything's hard coded, I think we should just start a new project. Okay. Okay, let's create a quiz app. And we want unit tests. Okay, new project. A lot of things I don't want right now. So I can just get rid of it. Okay. Seems good. Let's see if I can run this. Oh, uh, you need to remove the main interface. Yes, so from here, I don't have a storyboard anymore. Let me run this again. Okay. Boom. Empty application. Okay. I think we should start with the question view controller as we had in our prototype where we show a header and a bunch of options you can select. Oh, makes sense. Let's okay. start with the test. Yes. So let's create a question view controller test. No, thank you. We import exit tests and let's create our test case class and let's create our first test. Well, to test view controllers, you need to load the view. So it's in a ready state to be rendered on screen. And you need to start the view lifecycle. Exactly. It's pretty much what would happen if they are put on screen. Mm -hmm. So we can start saying when view did load. Let's start simple. We have a header, so it renders header text. So I assume that the header text is going to be the question. Yes. Okay. Should we say render question header text? Question header. Okay. So let's create our assertion. What do we want to happen is we're going to have a system under test. That's going to be the view controller. And we want a question header label. I think it's too long. I would just call it header label. Okay. Dot text needs to be whatever we pass to it. So in this case, let's say Q1. We need to load the view. One way to do it is just to call the view here. Right. Why don't you just call view did load there? Well, if you read the documentation of view controllers, you shouldn't invoke view did load directly. That's not the natural way that things happen. To load a view, there are some internal things that happens only when the view is accessed the first time. So to be a nice citizen, it's better to just... Just follow the documentation, things. right? Exactly. So we need to create a SCT and give it a question q1 that's it so let's create one question view controller here in our main target let's import ui kit and let's create our class and that's a view controller and it has a initializer that gets a question string and we need to capture this somehow so I need a uh, I don't want this to be accessible, so let's make this private. Uh, and let's make it a string. Well, it should probably be a let. I don't want this changing. Maybe it needs to change, but so far it doesn't. And, well, I have a compiler error here. Well, it forces me to have the required initializer. So maybe we should have a convenience initializer instead. Yeah, yeah. this is UI kit madness here yeah <laughs> the custom initializers but the convenience should do it convenience initializer so then i don't need this here mm -hmm. but i need to call self.init and then set my properties yes so what is happening here okay it needs to be a var i think it needs to have a default value also okay that's why and we need a header label that we can add here. 
I like to have this layout separated from the view controller logic so we could have a different class that sets up okay. the header label for you and layouts it or just a neap. You don't need to do it programmatically. Okay, let's create a few. And we've used the same name as the class. When you call init, it's going to do the loading for you. Mm -hmm. A couple of things we need to do when you have an ape. You need to set the file owner class and set the field to whatever it needs to be. Okay. And our header label. Right now, I don't want to care about how it looks. No layout. That's not part of the Just unit test. Maybe you're going to have some UI tests for that, but I think that's enough for now. So, control drag, and we can create our header label. Weak, yes, please. Boom, there it is. Let's go back to our tests. We have our header, we have our class. Oh, that's default internal, so our test target doesn't have access to it. We can make it testable import quiz app, and that should do it. So let's see the difference now that we're running the test with a simulator, how long it's going to take? A lot. <laughs> well, it wasn't that bad, but let's say three to five times slower. I think it's a lot more than that, but... Yeah, that's pretty slow, <laughs> but okay. Let's make this fitting test pass now. Let's have a view to load. We just need to set the header label.text to be the question. That's it. Okay. Okay. That's all. We need a second test here. Let's say we need to also show the options for answers. Right. So this can be in a table view. If we follow our prototype, it's a table view. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine to do yeah, that right now. Simple solution. So start with the zero case. Okay. With no options. Options. Renders. Zero. Options. Okay. So now we need to give us some options. Let's say it's empty. There are no options. And we are going to load the view. And we need to assert the table view number of rows mm -hmm. is zero. Something like that. Yes. So, okay, let's start with these options. And it's an array of strings so far. Mm -hmm. What else? This is going to break our first test, so we need to add this here. And let me comment this out and make sure it still works. Okay, it works. So we need a table view now. And we can follow the same process for the header. We drag a table view to our main view. And we control drag it to our code and table view. Now we connect them. Back to the tests. Uh, apparently that's not the right method name. Okay, I think it's in section zero. Yes. Let me run this test. And it passes. We have a passing test and we have no implementation. That's no op, but it's good to have it there because as we progress, we might break it. So let's carry on to the one option test. We just copy and paste this. So one option renders one option. A1. Okay. Yeah. And now this should be one. Let's run this. It should fail. And it should fail. And it does. Now we need to start thinking about this table view data source. And who should be the table view data source? It's in the view controller. Could be. Let's start with this then. Data source. And we need to implement some methods now. Yes. So table view number of rows is mandatory. And we can return one to make the test pass. But then we would break the no options. Exactly. So. Right now we can just say options.count, but we still don't have an option variable. So now it's time to have a private or options, just like we have for questions. Mm -hmm. 
and it needs to be an array of strings and it needs a default value and I think empty is a reasonable default value yeah and we need now to have the other required method self row let's just return the cell for now that's we're fine. gonna get there mm -hmm. it's mandatory you need to implement it we cannot return new it's not optional so we're gonna get there and it fails because our table view is not connected with this data source yet we could do this in code or we could do it in the interface builder and since we are TDDing this, I think it's fine to do interface builder, less code. It hides yeah. the implementation, but uh, yeah, for now, it's fine. So I can get the table view here and connect the data source to be the files owner. That should do it. Let's run the test again. And it does. Okay. We could add a test to make sure that the table view data source is the question view controller. But doing so, we'll make your test a bit fragile because if you decide to refactor and have a different data source class, a different implementation, then it's going to break that test and you're going to have to go there and fix it. Actually, what we want to do is just say the table view has it. Like it doesn't matter how it has like one or two or zero rows. What matters is that it has it. So it's easier later to refactor this and put this data source in a different object without breaking the test. The test is still true. So you say, yeah, it has the number of rows I want. Doesn't matter how, doesn't matter who's providing that. So we write less tests and your test is more about what it does, not how. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. So let's carry on. We could have the two options, but I think we, we're good here. Yeah, it can be a same physical assertion there. So let's finally think about this cell. And the options is just a string rendered in a cell. So renders one option label. Yeah. And I don't think we need uh, to text as to follow our convention here. Uh, sorry, I, I don't think we need to create any custom cells right now. Yes, we don't have a layout yet. So I don't want to be putting any layout concern in my production code or in tests. So I think it's fine for us to just test these with a normal table view cell that okay. has a text label. I agree. Okay, so if you have this A1, I want to make sure that I get a cell and it has the A1 rendered in there. Yes. So let's do that. Let's get the cell at index. So we say dot table view dot data source. And that's optional. We need to get table view and we pass the SCT dot table view cell for row at index path. Put this in a variable. Let's call this cell and let's create an index path. That's zero in section zero. Now we can test that our cell text label dot text is a1 yeah it's exactly right what is wrong then it's an optional okay oh that's interesting it's optional because the data, the data source, source is optional. optional okay yeah although this method returns a non-optional since there is an optional in the chain it's going to return an optional yeah <laughs> interesting let's run this test and I expect to fail Okay, right now we could just hard code A1 here, like we did before in the flow, and then have an A2, but I don't want to be hard coding stuff anymore. Yeah, you would probably not do that. Yes, yeah, so I'll probably not do that. So what we can do here now, we can create our cell, then I can get the text label, and get my options at index path row. That's it. Timer is done. Huh, perfect timing. Let's just see if we pass. Well, that's optional. It's an optional, yeah. And I don't think that's gonna work because I need to give it a style. Let's see. That might crash or not. Yeah, it passes. That's perfect timing for our tomato to end. Let's think about what we did so far. So for me, 
the interesting thing here is the separation of the layout. It's one thing to test the behavior of the view controller, and another thing how this view controller and its subviews is gonna are gonna look like. And I find it fascinating to be honest. I know it looks stupid right now, but I think it's gonna pay off later. Well, if you look at the view, it does look stupid, right? But how important is this? Like, we don't care about the layout right now. We are testing the behavior of this controller and the implementation of the cell data source. And we even enable this implementation to move somewhere else without breaking any tests. And I think that's very, very important. I expect to have like a nice UI at some point. And I don't want to be breaking this code because of this new UI. Okay, let's move to the next one.